welcome to a time of worship here at Sturgeon Bay United Methodist Church. This is Pastor David Lystra, and I am so glad that you have joined us today. This is the first Sunday in the season of Lent, a 40-day period of time where we prepare ourselves to welcome Jesus Christ as the resurrected one. But there's a journey that we must take before we can reach that point, and that is what this season of Lent is for, for you and I and us all to journey together, to stand before the cross of Jesus Christ, to witness that his dying form on that cross, and then to look to the tomb, look to the closed tomb, and wait for it to open and the promise within to be revealed. This coming Wednesday, we're going to be starting our uh, biblical study for Lent, our Lenten study. That'll be on Wednesday at 6.30. This is via Zoom meeting. And as such, uh, we need to know if you're going to want to participate with that. Now, the book that goes with this um, can still be ordered. I don't know if you can get it in time for that particular Wednesday, but that would not preclude you from being part of the, of the study if you so chose to be. Uh, it would uh, be a great aid to you to have that book. So we encourage you, if you'd like to get the book, to call the office for the details or to go to our website and you can find out there about the study. We hope that you will and we hope that you will be joining us on Wednesday evenings throughout the time of Lent until we reach Wednesday during Holy Week, which would be our last in the series of that study. But this time now, I'd like to invite you to sing with me, Savior, like a shepherd lead us, the words of which now appear on your screen. Will you pray with me? O oh God, our deliverer, you led your people of old through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide now the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
I come before you once again holding this symbol of the offerings given to this church. And I do so today to, with a certain awareness I want to share with you. Uh, it has become very common in the churches today that as we ended this final quarter of last year, many churches did so with a deficit. We were fortunate enough not to experience a deficit. But as we are entering into this first quarter of the new year, we are seeing a, a large downturn in the offerings given to our church. I just want to bring that to your awareness. But wherever you are, whatever church that you support, and I hope that you do support your church, please be aware of the circumstances that face us during this pandemic. Our expenses are very nearly the same. They are reduced for many, but we still have expenses and we still need your support so that we can continue, all of us in each of our churches, continue to be ready, to be ready for when we may open our doors again if they are closed at this time. All of our churches are engaged in ministry. We haven't shut down ministry of Jesus Christ in any way at all. And those things continue. So I want to encourage you, Give your gifts if you choose to this church. Use the online method. Use the mail in whatever way that you are comfortable. We pray that you will support our church. But I want to add to that. Whatever church you are affiliated with, share with them what you can so that we all might continue as the Church of Jesus Christ to go forward in the ministry we have been given until such time as God blesses us with health and the ability to meet once again. We look forward to that day. But in this meantime, this in-between time, please remember your church. May we pray. Mighty and loving God, we thank you for the generosity of so many people who throughout all of these many years have made the ministry possible. The ministry of Jesus Christ that has been given to its church and to each of us individually to go into the world and to teach others that which he has taught us, to help other people be introduced to the love and the grace that is Jesus Christ. We pray, God, that you will bless us in these efforts and that we will have that which we need to accomplish that work you have given us to do. So we thank you, God, for those generous hearts that support us, and we pray your blessing upon them as they give and also upon us as we use these gifts to serve you in this time and this place as best we are able. This we pray and give thanks for in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I heard your sermons about the bread of life. Yeah, it's about, called I Am the Bread of Life, one of the statements Jesus made about But himself. didn't we read a story once about that, about him feeding people? Yeah, right here in this book. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me, uh, yeah, it's the story you're talking about where he fed the 5,000 people right, with, with fish with a few and, loaves of and bread. bread and fish. And, yeah. yeah, that's this one here. You want me to read it again? Yeah, please. Okay, well, we'll do that. Um, this is called The Never-Ending Picnic in our book here. But here's how it reads. The little boy tugged on Andrew's robe. Sir? Andrew shooed the boy away. Again, the little boy tried. Sir, sir, I can help. You help? Thanks, but our problem is too big for one little boy, Andrew said as he tried to keep from laughing at the child's offer. I can share my lunch, the boy insisted. Andrew looked at the thousands of people who gathered on the hillside to hear Jesus teach. It was getting late, close to supper time. The crowd would be getting hungry soon. The disciple looked again at the young boy. Come with me, he instructed. Together they walked over to Jesus. This boy would like to share his meal with the people, but it's only five loaves of bread and two fish, not nearly enough for this hungry crowd. Jesus smiled. Tell everyone to sit on the grass, he said. As everyone settled down, Jesus held up the bread and fish and said a prayer of thanks. He gave the food to the disciples, telling them to share it with all the people. They did as he instructed. The disciples went through the crowd of thousands giving food to everyone. The people on that hillside had plenty to eat. There was so much food, the bread and the fish, that 12 basketful of bread and fish were left over. 
that people had come to hear a lesson from Jesus, but instead of hearing a lesson, they saw a miracle. Two little fish and five loaves of bread, talking about bread, right, mm -hmm. were miraculously multiplied by Jesus. So I understand the fact that he may have had a miracle and he, and he fed those people bread and fish. Mm -hmm. But like any meal, we need that meal again mm -hmm. to feel full, sure. to I feel mean, they, satisfied. They, it tells us here that they ate enough till they were satisfied, they were full. Mm -hmm. That's what you mean. Yeah, yes. that, that's good for the day. Right. But you know what's interesting about that, to me anyway, is, is that that may have been the first time some of those people in that group had ever had enough to eat. In wow, I never and, thought and of that. And leftovers, leftovers <laughs> was just unknown back then. That people only had enough food to go pretty much day to day, and maybe a couple days. Uh, they may have some uh, flour or something that might last longer, but they were pretty dependent on their day-to-day -day eating. They had to get food every day, so they would only have been full for the day. Okay, so, but your sermon says that Jesus is the bread of life. So how can people satisfy themselves with Jesus? Well, that, that's a good point. Jesus isn't saying what I offer you is uh, enough of me to last a day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, or what I have to say to you would only be good uh, for this day to get you through the day. Because he says, I am the bread of life. And what he means, it seems, by that is that he is enough. He is enough to fulfill, to give us what we need to live our lives happily and to live our lives with a future, a, a hope. Oh, okay. That's, that's in some ways kind of hard to think about, though. Yeah, it is. It is very it, hard. Yeah. It, it's kind of almost like it's got to be a day-to-day -day experience with Jesus it is, it to, is. Under, to accept him and rely on him. But he satisfies. That's the that, difference. Okay, See, he, I, he, his satis it, what he gives you will satisfy your needs for what he offers for all of your life. Hmm. As opposed to enough bread to get through the day. He's saying, I'm the bread of life. I am enough to get you through life. Oh, well, it definitely is different, isn't it? Oh, from yeah, wanting a, a loaf of bread and a fish, isn't yeah, that's it? Right. He's there yeah. with you all the time. Yep, and a much more satisfying meal, as it turns out, because he offers us just what we need. Oh. Not for a day or for a week, but for all of our lives, even into eternity, which is even harder to talk about. It is. It yeah. is, especially when you're little, you yeah. know. Oh, yeah. Yep. But that's okay. That it's is okay. like taking baby steps. That's right. We learn a little bit every day, all throughout our lives. No how, how matter how old we get to be, we're never going to understand it all anyway. No. Just a little bit more, maybe, than when the first time we heard it. Yep. Oops. So anyway, that's what the sermon is sort of about today, but that was a good memory. And yeah. Um, I think that uh, we should think about that a little bit more, um, about what Jesus means to us, um, and about what he offers. Yep. So, all right, well, all right. well, better get busy getting that sermon ready to go. You better. All right. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. Then. Okay. We'll, we'll get back. All right. Uh, okay, bye. Bye-bye. Our scripture for today is from the book of John, chapter 6, verses 22 to 40. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that only one boat had been there and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples, but they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, you are looking for me not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of God will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, 
I tell you the truth, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives his life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Join us now as we sing, My Jesus, I Love Thee. We continue now with this series on the I Am statements of Jesus as we find recorded in the Gospel account of John. Can you remember a time when you first met somebody? Uh, Not just a simple introduction uh, where someone told you their name and maybe you shook hands, but When you first met somebody where you had a little time, perhaps you sat down at a table across from them with a cup of coffee and and you spoke to each other, you you came to know each other in such a moment. Maybe one or the other of you said, well, tell me something about yourself. And you would tell them such things of, well, I was born here, raised there, what have you, and I'm married or not, I have children or not, and what I do for a living, those kinds of things were likely the kinds of things you would share with them so that they might know something about you and they would do the same and you would walk away from that encounter having made a new friend and and knowing something about them but the truth is what you would know about them from such a, a little a little encounter such as that would be all would be almost nothing in comparison to what you could know about them never having even met them, just putting their name in a search engine online. 
And there you will discover all kinds of things in addition to that kind of information, many things that perhaps someone would not want to share with another who they just met. There would be things in that electronic persona that is you on the, and me on the web that maybe things you would prefer people to find out a little later down the line, or maybe they're great things. The difference between asking someone to tell you something about who they are and how they would fill in that space with the answer they would give and who they really are, who we really are, is very vast oftentimes indeed. Imagine with me for a minute if instead of saying, tell us something about yourself or tell me about uh, your, who you are, we, they looked at you specifically and said, now, I want to know, who are you? That's a very different question. Who are you? It goes beyond the roles that you hold in life. It goes beyond the, the, you know, the, the kinds of things that you have done, the work you've done. It gets to the very heart of who you are. Who are you inside? Who are you really? To know that about somebody takes years of living in relationship with them. And even after years, even after a lifetime, we cannot really fully know someone else. There was a time in Jesus' life when he walked this earth that he thought it the time to send the disciples on something of a field trip. He sent them out in two by two to go into the countryside, the cities that surrounded them, and to practice what he had been teaching them for the previous several years, how to share the gospel, how to teach people what Jesus came to teach. And they had gone out, and, and the time had come for them to return, and you can imagine them sitting around a campfire as they all gathered together, or perhaps around a table sharing a meal in a house somewhere, and Jesus asked the question, who do the people say I am? That's sort of like saying, what is my social media appearance? How are people saying things about me? What is, what is being said out there in the world about me? But then he asks a much more important question of those disciples. Who do you say I am? Who do you know me to be after having spent this time with me, having seen the things I have done, experiencing me as a, as a person? What do you say about who I am? Now, the only way they can answer that question is if they had been in relationship with Jesus, if they had listened to him and watched him and walked with him, not for just a brief meeting, but day after day after day, having experienced Jesus, to even begin to have a bit of an understanding of who he was and is. Our gospel reading from today is Jesus telling us who he is. The setting is important to understand what he means when he says, I am the bread of life. We need to take a step back. He refers to it, uh, it's referred to in this reading, but we need to take a step back Literally, a day or so before, Jesus was on the other side of, of the uh, Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. He was on the other side, the side that is not within the influenced area, the area that uh, the, the Jewish people had influence over. It was on the other side. And he had been over there with his disciples, and a large crowd had come to follow him to where he was. They had heard about his healing, the scriptures tell us. And they wanted to be with him, to see him, to hear him, and to experience his healing touch. Now the scriptures tell us that the day grew late and people were hungry and they were in something of a, of a wilderness area. And Jesus raises the question to Philip, how are we going to feed all these people? And Philip says, it's not possible. Even half a year's salary couldn't even provide a single bite to all these people. Andrew, 
comes forward with a young child, a boy, and says, well, here are five loaves of bread and two fish, but what is that before such an incredible multitude of people? Jesus said, it's enough. He had the people sit. He divided the food into baskets, gave it to his disciples, and they took it out amongst the people. And to everyone's amazement, they ate until they were satisfied, this bread and this fish. Now the day had passed, and on the, on the other side, the, the side where the Jewish people had influence in Capernaum, and the people who had been there and witnessed this feeding and had experienced being satisfied looked for Jesus, couldn't find him, and followed back onto the other side of the lake to find him again, to, to find him and, and to continue with this wonderful festival of food. Indeed, when they asked him, where did you go? He said, truly, I tell you, you were here because you ate to your full. You were satisfied, and you've come seeking such nourishment. But if you knew if you knew what I have to offer, you would ask for that which satisfies for a lifetime. What must we do? What, what, what must we do to please God and receive this wonderful abundance that lasts for a lifetime? Jesus said, believe in me. He said it this way, believe in the one who God has sent into the world, which is he. And they were saying, then provide this to us. Let us have this wonderful meal. In our, our ancestors experienced such a time where God provided bread from heaven in the form of manna and took care of us and nourished us. They ate to their full. Each day there was enough to satisfy. God provided. Provide us such food now. And Jesus said that food that you referred to did not come to you by Moses, but was given to you by God. This is true. But the bread that I offer, the, the bread that I bring to you, the true bread of heaven, that is not something that satisfies for a short time or a day, but it satisfies your desires and your needs for a lifetime, even beyond into eternity. I am the bread of life. This is what I give you. And he says, those who eat of me and drink of me, which is metaphorically to receive what I have to offer, you will never hunger and thirst again, for this is the true bread and drink of heaven. And that is I, and I offer it to you freely. Jesus is saying about himself, I am the source the source of that nourishment that your spirits need to make it in this life, to live an abundant life, and to stand before God and be able to say, I too am one who have received this nourishment. I have been blessed because of your son who has come into this world, my Savior, my Lord. Jesus is saying, in contrast, all other sources of this sort of food will leave you wanting. It will never fully fill your, your need. It will never be sufficient unto you. Only what I offer is sufficient. I ask you, as you hear these words about Jesus and how he spoke of himself, how do you hear them today? Do you recognize Jesus as being the source of that which you desire and need that only he can fill? Is he for you the bread of life? Or is he just another individual offering some spiritual advice? It's an important question to ask. Do we accept Jesus on Jesus' own terms or do we not? Do we accept what he says about himself as defining who he is, or do we not? There really is no interway here. There is no middle of the road in these kinds of questions. This goes very deep into who Jesus is, and it means everything to us. During this season of Lent, as we contemplate 
who it is that Jesus said he is, we need to reconcile what he is saying about himself with what we have inside our hearts. Just as in those days when he gathered with his disciples and he said, who do the people say that I am? That wasn't a sufficient answer. It was an incomplete answer. It was only a surface explanation of Jesus. But when he asked, who do you say I am? That goes right to the heart of the matter. Jesus is saying to us, I believe with all my heart during this season of Lent, looking us in the eye in a spiritual sense and asking us that same question, who do you say I am? We'll continue with these I am statements in these next several Sundays, but I hope that you will begin to ask yourself this question. Who do you say Jesus is? Because how you answer that question makes all the difference in the world for you. Until next time, in Jesus' name, amen. Please join me now in singing, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought. And now, dear friends, as we continue on in this season of Lent, may we go forward on this journey together, and may we do so in joy and celebration, for truly, God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, has blessed us and continues to bless us during these days we live in. Look for the love of God. Look for God's mercy. Look for God's grace. It is everywhere. We must open our eyes to see we must believe in the one whom he sent. And then we are given the grace to see God's hand in our lives and the lives of our world, even in the midst of difficult days. He leadeth me, he leadeth you. In Jesus' most holy name, be blessed. Amen.